Hey, this is Graham. And this is Brian. From the Bombcast Podcast. And you're listening to Everything Pro Wrestling, a show by the fans, for the fans. An amazing event. Uh, definitely something different. If this is your first time here, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman, being joined tonight by my partner in crime, Derek. Yo, yo. We are here to review WrestleMania Night One. It was quite an interesting night. We're going to talk about this night tonight. We're going to try and give you a little uh, preview for night two before we get into that tomorrow. Well, technically today. And uh, it's going to be a good one here. Uh, Let's get into the intro and then let's talk some WrestleMania. Let's go. All right, guys, so listen, if this is your first time here watching us live on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that like button for us, helps out the video in the YouTube algorithm world, helps more people see it, more people see it, more people subscribe, the better the channel gets, the better the things get for everybody, you know how this works. Um, So please help a brother out with that. And if you're listening on the audio side, give us a follow. Helps out. Spread the word. If you guys want to follow us on any social media links, just type in at EPW show. We are on there. Guaranteed. Uh, Come interact with us. Talk some pro wrestling with us. Send us some of your videos, commentaries, whatever you got, and we'll be sure to listen to them. Um, Derek, WrestleMania night one. Going into it, I'm pretty sure we both thought that this was going to be it was going to be tough. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, WrestleMania hasn't been hitting on high uh, on a high note like it has been or used to be. Um, but tonight, tonight was good. Tonight was different. Let me ask you this: Do you like the two night format better than when we used to sit through like the seven eight hour shows? Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sitting, sitting through two uh, two events in one night, bro. Yeah, way too much yeah. sometimes. Like you would just you would just be stuck there. Like there was nowhere for you to go. Yeah, too much, too much. But I, I like I like the two night uh two night uh special. And then Matt, I've been in the arena for one of them. That WrestleMania 33, we were in the arena probably until like 12 30. Yeah. That was way too long. Um, let's give some shout out to people who are joining us live, giving us their thoughts. We got positively Ian the house who's left us with a what? what? Uh, Matt Lopez says, adrenaline in my soul. W.E. sign Cody Rhodes. <laughs> uh, BJ says, it's going to be a late one tonight. We'll try not to keep you too late, BJ. Uh, Cody Rhodes at WWE. I just hope Cody is happy. Now nah, talk about RO- ROH Supercard. Uh, quit playing. ROH Supercard was talked about. If you are subscribed to the audio version of the podcast, we did that in NXT Stand and Deliver. I gave you a little double dose. See, you got to follow me everywhere. You never know when you're going to get a surprise. Um, Night one delivered more than what was expected. I agree, Rob, 100%. Uh, I'm buzzing. Uh, (laughs) Facts. Ant won't stop in the house. Yo, Ant just dropped a dope WrestleMania song. Make sure you show him some love. Ant, uh, love the video that you put out for that, man. Uh, Malik Murray, bro, as much as people want to hate WWE, they do deserve it, but that was a good night one. It was hood. Uh, WrestleMania night one was way better than I expected to be fire. Look at this. Hey, Kyron, Derek, what's good, Matt? 
Don't act like it wasn't still longer than uh, a taker intro. <laughs> ROA Supercar was the banger of the weekend. Yeah, that was definitely a show I would highly recommend. Uh, Cody Rhodes going for Roman's titles. We'll see. Night one was a fun show. Cray, what up, guys? What's good, Cray? What up? What up? Uh, a said Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship was an incredible match. Yes, and we're going to get into all of that. He said, ooh, EPW with the sneak drops. That's right. Go ahead, get on in there. And they're kind of quick thoughts too, E. So don't expect some in-depth stuff like you're going to get tonight with the grades and everything. I didn't do that for that show. But um, definitely check out Supercard of Honor if I may make a recommendation myself. Um, you ready to get into this, Derek? Let's go. All right. So we get America the Beautiful. It is sang by Brantley Gilbert. I'm not too familiar, but it was nice to hear America the Beautiful played. It's kind of a WrestleMania tradition. So I thought that was nice. And the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders came off. You guys don't know, Derek is a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. Never. Some would say it's uh, God's team. <laughs> Leave it at that. Leave it at that. Derek's least favorite phrase and probably team. Yes, by far. <laughs> right, man? Um, our dub in the house, poor Kofi and Xavier. Now, I heard rumors that they were getting moved around. Are they on night two now? Did they get bumped? I don't know. Um, oh, we'll get into our favorite match of the night, uh, Malik Murray, but favorite WrestleMania match of all time for me, it's Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 25. Ooh. Do you have a favorite one of all time, Derek? When you go back, you're just like, what is WrestleMania? This is it. Uh, we have to come back to me on that one, bro. Pro wrestling shoot in the house. What's going on? Pro wrestling shoot. All love, man. Hope things are well. Malik Murray said next year they need to do a ladder match for sure. Uh, Heartbreak Kid Tokyo. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on now, Tokyo. Uh, Malik Murray said Rock versus Stone Cold. There's three of them, though. Which one? Um, let's get into the opening contest, shall we? Uh, and it is going to be for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. We have the Usos on one side taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. I've been spelling his name wrong. I just realized it was with an S and not a Z. I'm disappointed. Ah, well, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. So I, I don't know here, Derek. This was uh this was a different match. The SmackDown tag title scene really hasn't been setting it off for me. No, not a lot mm -hmm. of comp over there, but Nakamura's pretty good. And Boogs, I like the act of those two together right now. And the Usos are there. Um, this was a basic match. Boo Boogs got his uh, knee buckled when one of the Usos jumped onto his back, and it looked like he was going to possibly do like a double Samoan drop or something. Yes. I don't know if he's really hurt or whatnot. If anybody in the chat has an update for us, please let us know. But what did you think of uh, this match, Derek? Uh, it was tough because I, I don't know if I could really say this was uh, a match that could really get me – over or hold me over um i didn't really care for it mm -hmm. it was okay but i it wasn't a match that i was looking forward to just, probably solely because shinsuke has come in and disappeared very quickly um he hasn't he hasn't been the, the wrestler that we knew yeah that we loved now he's here and now he's just he's just there kind he's of just there I, I don't know if I like that. Listen, so after his knee buckled, we don't know if something ripped, he got hurt, but Nakamura gets in. He's a house of fire. Um, eventually, the Usos take advantage of the two-on-one. They beat him down. They hit the Uso splash, and Nakamura gets hit with the 3D after. They called it the 1D. Pause. And after he uh... – <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. It was just <laughs> – it was just – it was there. So he gets hit with the uh, 1D. They give him the pinfall. One, two, three, the Usos retain. I said C-plus for that match. Um, yeah. and, and our grade, like the scale is listed down below for why we rank it. It's just the easiest way, I think, to uh, co uh, communicate it to you guys for what we thought of the match. C-plus overall for it. Absolutely. Um, pretty interesting. Let's go into the chat here. Uh, Six said, didn't pay for the pay-per-view. I was worried the show would suck, but I was not expecting Stone Cold to have his last official match. I was expecting him to talk his shit, stun KO, and leave. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a little bit more than that when they said it had to be the main event. You couldn't just leave it that way. 
Uh, St- Steve Austin versus The Rock, WrestleMania 19. That's my second favorite one. For me, 17 is still their best bout of all time. Uh, WrestleMania always sucks in Dallas. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree with that one. This is better than 32, though, for sure. Uh, right now, at least where we stand. It looks like the match was cut unless they are putting it tomorrow on the kickoff. Ooh, I hope so. hope they get a chance to uh, get their match in. Yes, uh, Malik Murray says the first one, 15. We watched that one together actually back in the day. I don't know if you oh, remember that at uh, yeah, yeah, the Friends yeah. Party. Yeah. That's when we was whooping ass on uh, WrestleMania 2000. I always got to make sure people know. Undefeated. Uh, prayers to Boogs. Uh, CJ knows Stone Cold is my favorite wrestler of all time. Seeing him actually wrestle and put me through a lot of emotions, man. I was happy, excited, wanted to cry and throw up a bit. <laughs> what? Uh, my problem with this match is they needed to merge the tag division and make one tag title. I kind of agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Boogs has to have surgery. Quad, I believe. Ooh, quad tear. You can see it pop back if you look. Thank you, R Dub. Uh, they said he needs surgery. Same injury as Triple H, R Dub said. Thank you, R Dub. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Run the Ropes crew, too, him and uh, BJ. Remember when they, uh, they showed that on live uh, television? Triple H's uh, surgery. Yeah, that was beast, man. Ugh. That's how he got people behind him. Uh, one and done. <laughs> I have a few uh, gripes, but decent show. Uh, pause. <laughs> Malik's laughing at. I don't consider that an Austin match. Uh, definitely better than 32. Yeah, and that was only half the show. <laughs> We're like, yeah, better than 32 already. Austin Rock, 17 is my favorite. Close second, though. Same, Matt. Same. Uh, Jared Simmons, who's going to uh, give DraftKings a shot? This man was already doing it. I better get some of the money, too, because I definitely told him I need this for court purposes. I definitely told him some of the picks he had to make. So, right, I should get a little scratch. Yeah. My palm, my palm should itch a little bit like, yo, Derek, he probably would win a million. Give me like a G probably like, here you go, good sir. <laughs> you didn't do much, CJ. I, I risked it all. <laughs> um, let's get into the next match, Derek. Uh, let's talk about... Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin. Derek, this might be the match that I expected the least from, and it wasn't so bad. Wait a minute. The man's name is Happy Corbin? Yeah, because he, he's got bread now. Like I, like Happy Gilmore? Kind of. I, I prefer when he was broke bitch Corbin. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. That was the Corbin that I love and knew. But um, Baron Corbin is in this match, and it seems like him and Madcap are having problems. Madcap, the Andrew the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner, according to uh, something they had up on the pre-show. Who the hell is Andrew the Giant? Somebody's got to do spell check on these guys. Oh, my God. But he, he is the Andre the Giant Battle Royal winner. I wish that was on the show. I feel kind of like, uh Yeah, j- j- jipped out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do something better. So um, he's getting up there, and it seems like, like I said, Corbin and him are just kind of not clicking, and he's not happy with him. Uh, Drew McIntyre had a nice dive over the top rope, Undertaker-esque, some would say. Yes, he did. Um, uh, which had me nervous because I don't like when big men do high flying moves like that. Yeah, like, all I see is bad happening. Right? Uh, BJ said I gave this match a C minus on your scale. Uh, someone finally kicked out of the end of days. Yes, that hurt. Um, Baron Corbin hits the end of days one two, and this is the first time someone has ever kicked out. This is the importance of protecting a move. It was kind of like when someone first kicked out of the pedigree. Like I was like, oh shit, right? Yeah. Like, it's crazy when someone yeah. kicks out of those. But when you kick out of it constantly, the moves kind of eh. It falls to yeah. It doesn't have its uh impact if you do hit it. Now yeah. you're waiting for like three of them to be hit or yeah, and that that just tears everything apart. Anywho, um, Drew McIntyre gets the victory with the Claymore kick afterwards. At the conclusion of the match, Drew gets in the uh, what's it, Mad Cat Moss's face, mm-hmm. and he swings the sword and just breaks the ropes. What the hell? <laughs> Yo, what? People are here tripping. Bro, they need to give Happy Corbin a new gimmick, bring back the old Lone Wolf gimmick again. Uh, Lone Wolf character was better. Andrew is Andre's half-brother. Andre match was on SmackDown. Yeah, I know, but you you put so much behind it to make people feel good, and then you never did anything with it. Right. You know? Say hello to Cesaro for me, someone. Like, what are we doing, man? Um, BJ said, that's why protective finishers need to be a thing. One end of days in the kick out was in the crowd was in shock. That is true. Um, and Cody you had to use three crossroads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. We gave this a B minus, though, to be fair. Like, I thought the shock was really good. 
Yeah. And it wasn't a bad match. Corbin's really good. I think sometimes people give him grief for no reason. Right. Question. Greatest deep six. <laughs> I know you got an answer. <laughs> I think it might be... I'm going to say Chad Gable. Chad Gable has the greatest end of days in NXT where he did all the flip deep, flip around, loop de loop, and then he just caught him and it was like, done. Right. No. Oh, man. I want to say the best deep six. Ah, it's usually, it's, for some reason, it's usually done on Dolph. Dolph sells the hell out of that. Yeah, Dolph, Dolph is pretty good. When they were on SmackDown, I think I kind of yeah. remember a good one from that one, too. Uh, someone said Corbin's a great mid-card heel. Uh, so what does Drew do after this? I think Drew's going to get elevated back to the main event. Some people were wondering why was Drew in this spot. Drew was in this spot because he was injured, and they didn't know he was going to be back in time. So I'm sure somebody lost their spot from this match. Right. Um, Corbin's facial reaction was money after Drew kicked out of his finish. Good point, Jared. Good point. Uh, I think AJ had an amazing deep six as well. AJ, oh, yeah. uh, Corbin is solid in the ring, saved Dominic Mysterio's life many times. Uh, there's kind of a sadness for me too, man. I was reminded tonight of how all the wrestlers I grew up watching got me excited as a kid are old now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody goes, gets through that stage, man. Old is dirt. Facts. But can still move though. So, <laughs> um, let's get into the next match and this match. I don't know, man, this might, this might be the sleeper match of the night. I think. I think a lot of people were sleeping on this. We've got the Mysterios, Ray and Dominic versus The Miz and Derek's favorite, Logan Paul. Um, <laughs> honestly, hashtag wrestling fashion. Shout out to Queen and JPQ. Um, this match had they they had some styles here. I like I like the looks of the wrestlers. Ray comes out in some uh sweet colors of the Mexican flag. Dominic's wearing the U.S. flag colors, and then we've got Logan Paul and The Miz. They come out with some pretty cool gear. I'm not going to lie, Logan Paul looked like a call from WWE 2K22, though. Like I was like, this is fresh, but you look like a call. Right. You look like you're about to be at my rise. But I thought he did really good in all in all, Derek, when it came oh, to this yeah. match. Absolutely. Definitely did. Did very well. Um I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, it, it, was, it was definitely done well. Yeah, they had uh, Dominic. They were getting heat on Dominic for a while. Mysterio comes in like a house of fire. Uh, he tried to go for three amigos until he uh, got stopped by Miz. He pushed him into the ring post. Logan Paul hit Actually, three amigos in the frog splash. First of, first of all, let me retract what I said. Logan Paul actually impressed me a lot in this match, especially when he when he hit uh, his uh, so-called Eddie Guerrero shimmy. That was funny yeah that was that was weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you didn't see what he did you got to see this shimmy he did right before he did the frog flash oh it was funny God. it was horror it was it was hilarious we had us dying Mal malik's i got a question do you think that wwe should do a reset like reset the roster and championships and make them important and stop don't take all the belts away don't pull any of that wcw stuff where they did all yeah. those tournaments mm -hmm. but i do think they should stop with the gimmick pay-per-views though they should definitely should stop with the game. Uh, let's see here. Sean said night one is in the books. Good to be here. Thank you, Sean. Sean was on our preview and prediction show. If you want to go back and listen to us set up everything and for night two tomorrow, you can kind of fast forward halfway through and hear our thoughts on night two. Uh, my celebrity match with Floyd versus Big Show. That was good. Uh, number two on celebrity wrestling match of all time right here. Bro, good match or not, Logan Paul can eat one so effing annoying, bro. Uh, I just logged in the WWE 2K22. You might find yourself a Logan Paul car on Community Creations. Uh, I give this one a B minus. It would have been a C plus, but the fact they had uh, that tattoo Logan Paul do the three amigos and a frog splash was a super heat moment. It was. Uh, I like the card uh, as it went, and the matches got a little bit better. The Miz turned on uh, Logan Paul was a surprise. Yeah, me and Sean said that in in our predictions. We thought that that was going to happen. On there, um, Logan had the WWE 2K20 Empire of Tomorrow DLC gear. <laughs> Terrell, what's up? Uh, what's good, man? Thank you for joining us. Not a bad WrestleMania best match. Becky, Bianca, Cody, Seth, Stone Cold, KO. Uh, Jared said, I understand safety is important, but there are a few spots in this match where both teams are overly cooperating with each other to execute moves. That kind of annoys me. Part of the game, man. It's part of the game these days. 
right. uh, how Miz became the biggest baby face ever by turning on Logan. I don't, I don't see it that way. Dom's uh, Los Gringos locals attire was fire. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the attires were great tonight, man. Um, in the end, so the Mysterios hit a double six one nine on Logan Paul. Miz makes the blind tag. Miz sneaks in, dumps Dominic, skull crush a finale on Mysterio. One, two, three. Damn it. I was so mad. I was hurt. <laughs> and then uh, Logan Paul and him are celebrating. Miz was like, turn on you too. So right, I think exactly. we might be getting a Miz Logan Paul match at WrestleMania Backlash. I hate that name for the record, if you guys didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but we gave this a B. I thought this was fun. Um, let's see. Uh, uh-oh, he gave the salute back. I like it. I respect it, my G. Thank you, Terrell. Uh, and said, do you think Tony Khan was upset Cody went to WWE? No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. No. I think it was kind of expected. Like, where else are you going to go for if you wanted to get a payday? If that's what it was about. We don't know the real reason. Uh, Logan hit a beautiful frog splash. Agreed. Definitely. Stephanie McMahon comes out on stage next. Um, hashtag worst wrestling fashion we thought of the night. I don't know what she was wearing, but it looked weird. Like, was she wearing Air Force Ones or what? I don't know. Oh, Do your thing, Stephanie. That, I, that That's what it looked like, bro. It definitely looked like she was wearing some Air Force Ones. Yeah, so she came out, and I was just like, it was just a weird fit. And uh, Gable Steveson comes out, and they just introduced him, and that was it. That was that was it. He, he was out there, gave Stephanie a hug. I think right after that, he was gone. He didn't stay out there long at all. It should be interesting to see what he does. He got drafted to the Raw brand, so time will tell. Maybe he'll debut tomorrow? I don't know. Hey. Or not tomorrow. Excuse me. I'm so used to it. Well, technically it is Sunday. Yeah, so yeah. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. I want to know what happened between Cody and TK, man, but Cody had gone on record and said he'll never say why he left. I think they both agreed to it. Um, Cray said, I thought she had some J's, laugh out loud. I don't know what they were. They they look like the Chucky sneakers, though, and she came out like, what is that? Uh, no mic time. Terrible, terrible. Let's get into um, – the Raw women's title match next. This one was a banger. We've got Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch. Um, I can't front, man. I had a good time watching this match. Really did. I thought it was fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not usually big on the women's matches in WWE because they haven't really been that great. Um, they've been okay to – or decent to okay. Um but this one, this one was definitely different. This one was well more th- flush with the storyline as it should have been. And the the um the moves that were landed were flush as well. So you can't go wrong. Yeah, BJ, BJ said he's already not, he's turning on Gable. He feels like they keep showing him off, like look at our new shiny toy and then putting him back on the shelf. I know they are still cool, but it's got to hurt Tony a little bit, like when Kurt left uh, WWE for TNA. Yeah, we'll get into some of that. Uh, <laughs> Chuck, you said, keep my name out your mouth. Charles, man, we got to talk about those shoes, though, bro. You got to up your shoe game, all right? We can't we can't have you coming out here wearing the busted white them white skippies, man. <laughs> you just can't. Right. You can't do that. They do that. And, and got to talk about uh... – you out here uh, doing people in with uh, little toy hammers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, this was an awesome women's title match. That's obviously a WWE thing, but that's it. Becky with the MCU entrance video. Yeah, I did peep that. I did peep that in it. Uh, Becky comes out for this match in an Escalade truck, and Bianca Belair had a marching band. I thought the marching band did their thing in this. I thought they were good. They did. Um, that for, for a moment like this, this is what you want to have, um, for them to have that kind of music. For her to come out to that get that blood uh flowing 10 times stronger than it was before without the music so having stuff like that is an extra additive and it at most times it works so if you can do more of that i'll be happy i'm with you bro i'm with you uh marching band was lit and said chuck you haven't changed your look since the 80s <laughs> facts matt let them know um, I gotta say, it feels like Cody sold out, man. <laughs> All the shit he was talking. We'll, we'll get into Cody. We'll get into Cody. I swear. Um, we'll get into that. <laughs> save that comment. Save. Highlight that and save it because I want you to bring that back up. 
Rob said, who gives a fuck how TK feels about it? <laughs> Ooh, you guys are on one tonight, man. Um, so Becky comes out. She's out there. We got an early tease with the manhandle slam. That pinfall got us. Yes. Derek got up and was like, damn it, this better not be it. <laughs> that ref came so close to hitting the mat. We would You would have pissed everybody off. Oh, my God. I was I was ready to flip everything over. Like, yo, we're not doing this. All right. I, I did that BS with, with her before. Man, you can't do it again. Man, no, nah, you just can't. You just can't, bro. Don't so, me. so after that tease, um, Bianca Belair hits a nice four fifty uh, for a near fall on Becky Lynch. That that four fifty was smooth, especially off the second rope. Yeah, like that, like that was nice. That was nice. That that was really good. That four fifty. Now, after that, Becky decided, you know what, I I got to do a big move. <laughs> And Becky said, you know what? I'm going to go to the top rope. She went to the top rope and went for the Molly go round. Except for one thing. When she dove, she didn't get the distance she needed on it. No, and no, no, no. she ended up catching Bianca right in the face. Like, oh. like, dude, her eyeball is going to be done tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, would, I would be very surprised if she comes away with no damage whatsoever because I don't think she's gonna be damaged. She's just gonna on Monday her shit's gonna be swollen shut unless they have a way to like cut it open and they can make it look better. Man, listen, get the uh get the razor blade just put, and then put put the sticks smack <laughs> right there. Like the DVD <laughs> smack it right off your face, bro. Yeah she's gonna have to put some uh some ice on that tonight man she oh, yeah. she she took it though um, she ate the, the boot to the face and afterwards Bianca is fighting back and they go to the, uh, outside gets, uh, she goes for the manhandle on top of the stairs. She lands it. They go back into the ring. She goes for it again. Bianca propels herself off of the ropes from the manhandle slam into the KOD one, two, three, ring the bell. That's it. Stick in a fork, stick a fork in Becky. She's done. She has finally been dethroned as the, uh, raw women's champ. A minus grade for this. Yes, yes. This this was again, like I said, this this was a, a really, really good match. And this is something that we need to see more from WWE. It'll 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 bring more people. It'll it'll have us watching if you actually do it right. Right. Uh BJ said I think this match might have been match of the night for me. I'm giving it a B plus. We went A minus with this. I thought this was really good. And I like that the match had the backstory with it, whether it was by accident or on purpose. I'm good. I would like to believe it was on purpose. Yes. Because I hate when WWE lucks in the storylines. See, Daniel Bryan, WrestleMania 30. But I thought that this worked well. No, it did. It, it was perfect. Um, you couldn't ask for anything more. Man. Uh, for the botch, it was a hell of an impact. I agree, our dub. Uh, Six said she Nia Jax, her eye kind of poetic when you think about it. Uh, and she still got the dub. Belair is going to look like how Rocky looked after fighting Apollo. <laughs> a minus for me as well. Uh, a said. Uh, Rob said they dress. They said Stephanie dressed like Randy Watson from Coming to America. That boy good. I say you do. Uh, does Becky finally turn face or stay heel? I think by next year's WrestleMania, Becky Lynch will be a face. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. I, I don't think Becky's ever really been heel. She's been heel in name only. I feel like the fans still love Becky Lynch. Yeah. Um, the, the, the standing ovation that she got when she came back up until now, it all sounds the same. Like you have a mixture of yeah and – Nay, so I mean, let, let's 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 find a common ground here and figure out what we want to do with it. Is she a face or is she heel? Let's figure this out so that we can. I mean, just gauge know. just gauge fan reaction is what I say. Right. Um. So yeah, I just had to let everybody know Bianca Belair's eye is dead. I wrote that in the notes too, right there. <laughs> now, if you guys don't follow us on TikTok. Derek had a great TikTok moment. I want to play it, but I don't know if they're going to hit us with the copyright because we did catch like the top of Cody's music in it, so I don't want to play it on here. But just know we we have a TikTok video of our actual reaction when it was being announced that oh, who was the person. And as soon as Derek heard the wrestling 
has more than one. You hear Derek say, yo, he sounded like the dad when the son said the TV was broke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go on our TikTok and yeah. find it. It's our latest video yes. at EPW Show. Give it a heart. Give us a follow on there. Yes. Let us know that you're from EPW. We'll follow you back, man, I promise. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely funny, though. <laughs> Derek, do you know your new Twitter yet? See, Derek's been lying. I think Derek didn't do this. He says he made a new Twitter. He never gives it to us. He's fronting, bro. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Pull it up so that everyone can start sending their hate mail to Derek. All right. Let's see. Let me see. DS underscore elite one. See? Told you. So if you guys want to give Derek a follow on Twitter, we'll uh, we'll put that in. And that's way easier, by the way. So there it is. Um, let's get into this matchup here. So the match was originally proposed as Seth Rollins versus an opponent of Mr. McMahon's choosing. In reality, what did we get? Wrestling has more than one royal family. He did get to come out, though, with this, with this shit, though. The adrenaline. In my soul. I love that song, man. It's one of my workout songs. Like it is a good song. It is a great song. It's a great song. It definitely uh it'll definitely bring you in, like, oh, oh, okay, wait a minute. What time out? Whose music is that? Who's coming out? <laughs> yeah, look at this guy. He came out, and I know some people aren't happy with it, but we did get it. And also, what is Seth wearing? Like <laughs> Seth came out in lace gear. I'm like, what is, what is going on here? I know he thinks oh, he's the style man. man, and he comes out dancing and all that. I, I've told you guys, I don't like Seth's gimmick. I don't like Seth's music. I want Seth is so talented, though, that he gets away with it. But I really want them to do better with Seth. I think there's only two people in the world, two, that I can think of that could pull off lace and nobody would say a word. Goldust, WrestleMania 12? Roddy Piper, lingerie when he pulled off the uh, the attire gold this used to wear. Nah, nah. <laughs> I don't. I threw it out there. I listen. You leave my man gold this alone. Who do you got? Ah, uh, so you either got Gene Simmons. <laughs> you went. You went with all entertainers. <laughs> There's only two people who bust out lace. Gene Simmons. Who's the other one? And Prince. Yeah, Prince was the man. Prince was the man. Those are the only two I can really think of that can really pull a lace off, and nobody will question it. Honestly, guys, I'm not even going to get too deep into this one. Me and Derek, we, we talk about these shows all the time. You guys want to watch Match for Match, you can go look it up. I kind of want to just talk to you guys about Cody overall. Um, I, I'll run through this really quick. Nasty double suplex to the outside. Cody Rhodes hits a crossroads, only gets a two count. Seth hits uh, an impressive reverse suplex, holds on to it, transitions into a suplex slam. Seth is then going for a Phoenix splash. Cody moves out of the way. Cody hits a nice tiger driver. We see Cody uh, land the Cody cutter for a two count. Seth hits a pedigree, only gets a two count. And after a flurry of strikes onto Cody in the back of his neck and his cut up back, uh, Cody is able to hit another crossroads, hangs on for two. Then he does the punches, the old Dustin Rhodes, if you will. Man, I can dream my son. Cody is back in the WWF. Get yourself a WWF sip cup, and we're going to go out here, and we're going to do this big time for my son Cody, if you will. And he just drops the bionic elbow on him and then hits another crossroads and he picks up the win and defeats Seth Rollins. We gave this an A minus, but I want to talk Seth Rollins and uh, the big return of Cody Rose with you guys. So lay it on me. Um, Terrell, the fact that Cody came out to his ROH impact AEW entrance in a WWE ring. Yeah, something, man. Invasion. Now that would be a forbidden door. Something's happening, he thinks. That would uh, be a forbidden door, honestly. Uh, also B plus for me more so because of the moment itself, but it was a good for showing back the crowd pop for me. I think that's what gave us the little bit of edge on some of these, how the crowd Ooh, reacted. Absolutely. And, um, and you're going to see it in another match that how the crowd <laughs> reacted is going to affect the match. Um, but go ahead. Um, yeah. Um, so with this, I know, I know the speculations and rumors were all, were all there. Um, I think, in my opinion, um, I'm I'm a little disappointed in Cody. 
Like, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> I couldn't tell by that TikTok. <laughs> Hold on. I, you know what? Let me let. I want to get into some other people's comments because I think we can loop it in if I can find it. Here's six comments. Sick told me to loop back to his comment. I found it. He said, I got to say, it feels like Cody sold out, man. All that shit he was talking and he's all in and it's this or nothing. The reason behind that corny ass neck tat. Now you out here kissing WWE mats and shit. Like he felt kind of some kind of way about it. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm highly agreeing with Sick on this. Like, bro, you, you jive disrespected AEW like that. And I don't appreciate it. I'm pretty sure there are more people than me and sick who don't appreciate it. And then you go and kiss the mat. Like, like you, you haven't wrestled in a long time. Like, bro, you was just around the corner wrestling, dude. Like, stop. Yeah. It's, it's just kind of weird. The whole, like, I always wanted to be here. He was the person who was the most like out front of the EVPs doing things, handling business, bro. But, but, but let's think about it though. You're back at the company that made you look like an idiot. Yeah, yeah. Stardust was horrible. And Sig brought that up too. He said, who knows, maybe in a couple months it'll be Stardust again. We'll have to see, man. I and he had the nerve to do the whole thing. Like, come on, bro. Like <laughs> you're 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 turncoating a hard body, but do you? You gotta get your you gotta get your paycheck, whatever you gotta do, bro. I respect it. A and won't stop says that the song is iconic for Cody. It is. And Matt Lopez says that that song is my ringtone. Cody seemed uh, did seem disloyal. He talked about WWE the most in AEW. He was breaking thrones and everything, but he has a child now. If it was about money, providing is uh, one of his main priorities. I wish him the best. You're not wrong with that. No, not at all. But I, I just don't. I don't appreciate the way that he handled. Yeah, you, you reap what you say, but he also, I don't know, man. He did a lot of stuff, too, to WWE. I, it's it's very strange. Listen, I have no problem with it. I'm going to tell you guys why in a second. I'm going to come in at the end here. Bro, if it was Goldberg facing set, if no one else other than Cody came out, they were probably getting booed. Oh, yeah. I don't care if it was uh, – well, you know, I was going to use a bad example. I don't care who it was. It could have been someone who was super favored. If you came out, you were getting booed. Seth came out in lingerie, someone said. Cody also did the Stardust cartwheel. Um, Ant won't stop said Jeff Hardy you can wear the <laughs> Prince of Rick James. Oh, Jeff Hardy. Uh, watch this match again and take a shot each time. Corey says Seth didn't have time to prepare for Cody. Lord, you be wasted. <laughs> uh, I thought Co I caught Cody backstage uh, for punching me. Uh, Becky Bianca gets an ace. Cody and Seth gets an A minus. R Dub says. Uh, I love it. Cody versus Seth was my close second uh, match of the night. So where does Cody go from here? I say if nothing happens with Logan and the Miz, I think Cody and Miz feud. I think Cody needs to go in the ring and address Mr. McMahon tomorrow, or he needs to address his future. I think, or I'm sorry for Raw. That that needs to be what happens on the Mania after Raw. I think he should either be the first one out or the main event segment. Yeah, absolutely. R Dub said, I really wanted my prediction to happen. R Dub had a, a crazy theory involving uh, The Undertaker and a lot of things. It was wild. Oh, boy. Uh, Cody didn't sell out. He bought in. <laughs> Rob, always the heel. Uh, Cody is getting to be the executive producer for his dad's A&E documentary, part of his multi year deal. I did see that as well. And it's, that's another thing, bro. Like, I respect the, uh, the, what they're doing with that. But at the same time, Now nah, you know what? Forget it. Because <laughs> it. it was it was definitely gonna get ugly if I would have continued that. So uh Rob said he truly went all in. The fans run Cody away from AEW. I I would disagree with that. I think a lot of the fans like Cody too. Oh yeah. Uh I'm definitely more AEW than WWE leaning now, but I understand the wrong he's trying to make right. Rob said money talks. I agree with sick. Uh point of view i'm happy in a ring but that's all kind of made it feel weird uh wwe was the company that brought him in though it's home for him think of it like lebron leaving cleveland miami our dub now we if we go talk basketball i'm gonna let you know i didn't respect that shit either no 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 nah, that shit was weak too bro you you dragged you dragged your team on live television you made people wait to see where you signed 
And that's where I think a lot of the hate came from LeBron. Because I like LeBron before that. But once that happened, that's when the whole, like, yeah, I don't like this dude. He's done. Yep. He came off very egotistical. He did. He definitely did. And can't, can't be that way. Can't be that way, bro. Facts. He said he loved AW, but they didn't love him the same way back. It's basic relationship shit. Laugh out loud. Uh, yeah, but I, yeah, we won't get into it. You could, that's a, that's a long one we can get into. <laughs> nah, man, even though I prefer AEW, I'm not an AEW stand. The whole situation seems F to me. Uh, you had a hand in making WWE's top competitor and then you leave after that. F you on, bro. I don't agree with it. I think he will eventually wind up back in AEW, but I don't think he will ever be an AEW world champ. And just off that moment, not the guy to beat Roman. Uh, but all I got to say is Tony Khan should not let Tony go uh, and keep him like the EVP. That's Tony tried to keep him. I think, I don't know. I don't know what happened. It'll be very interesting to see what happened. Y'all think Vince will ever make Cody a heavyweight champ? Let's be honest. Mm. Hold on. I'm going to say something about that in one second, man. Okay. Uh, bro, NWO did the same thing. I think Cody and Seth actually have a program going forward. Seth stares him down for a good minute after the match. Everybody wants to go home. Uh, Cody fits better in WWE. Cody is the LeBron James of pro wrestling. LeBron James. Basically, I mean. Uh, Josh Burton, shout out to everything college basketball. By the way, Derek, shout out to the Tar Heels beating Duke. We were were watching that on the second screen, by the way, uh, during the next match that was on. Uh, Bro, I'm still buzzing. Uh, I need it after the week. Ready to catch up with you again, my friend. For sure, Josh. For sure. We got to get you on here, too. Uh, LeBron, a.k.a. the announcement, is the reason he is banned from NBA's Mount Rushmore. Jordan, Russell, Kareem, Magic, Kobe would have never done that nonsense. Our dub, Cody becomes the new world champion uh, when they bring back the belt for a few months. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, he's getting to produce the Dusty. LeBron can do whatever he wants to league wise. Name one baller that's been this good for this long everywhere he's gone. Jamal Crawford. <laughs> what a hater. What a hater answer. <laughs> you know what, though? Honestly, the boy Jamal Crawford was cooking people, bro. Let's talk about that playoff run uh, that he's got coming up. We'll talk during the playoffs. Let me stop. Let me stop. Uh, let's go Tar Heel. See, Terrell's a good man. I knew it. Shout out. Uh, difference between Cody and NWO is that the original NWO members were main eventers. When did Cody ever, when has Cody ever been a legit main event guy? The closest was AEW. I think, yeah. okay, so yeah. what I think happened was a lot of people came into AEW and it changed the way the roster was viewed. Yes. Once you get Punk, Danielson, Adam Cole, uh, Jay Cargill, the roster was being elevated, and you started seeing people take spots that were coming up, and some of those people wanted those spots. This is pro wrestling. Jealousy's going to happen. Cody wasn't cool with being number seven. I get it. If that's right. not what you want to do, fine and dandy. But when you're an EVP, it's going to be viewed differently. You guys bring up good, yeah. solid points about all of this. Yeah. ROH wasn't a factor into a lot of things. Brian Cage was wondering why Tony Khan probably exercised to use his contract to extend it another year because of ROH. We don't know everything that was going on behind the scenes, what was known, what wasn't known, what's happening, what's not happening. Right. So, cool. It's just kind of on a wait-and-see basis. I'll say this about Cody, though. Cody going to WWE is a good thing for the pro wrestling business. Yes. Why do I say that? WWE's roster is lackluster. I don't care what anyone says. We've went through this card already. And you're kind of like, this is what you've got? This is the best you've got for Mania. And guess what? We've been watching these same matches on SmackDown and Raw every single week. And they're (laughs) not fun to sit through these same shows, repeat the same six matches. And I'm like, dude, it's been six months. Can we please change up this matchup? We don't have the IC and US champion on here. Fine. And Sick brought up, put him back at Stardust, Derek. Here's why you can't do that, bro. Hear me out. You can't do that for a simple reason. You have someone who knows the contract status of a lot of the wrestlers. You have someone who knows what person X is looking for in AEW. Cody is going to be the gatekeeper. So as long as Cody can get them people to sign over that they want, uh, we've heard rumors of MJF they like a lot. 
We've heard rumors that they want to get certain people back, whomever it may be that you hear. Cody's got the key to it. Then he can make something happen. He could be like, I can get you Jay Cargill. Right. I can mm-hmm. I can do this for you. And that's why he's there now. Maybe yeah. he'll get a job backstage eventually. Yeah. They they've got purpose for this. They can't screw this up. The moment they screw ah. this up with uh the American Nightmare, I had to rock this shirt in hopes that he showed up. I was like, yo, I gotta change the shirt if, if it oh. ain't Cody. But when but they have a purpose, they cannot mess this up. And I feel like Cody has to be a main eventer at this point. Yes, uh, Cody does have to be a main eventer. On top of that, they they can't mess it up. If they mess it up, that's that's coming from here, way back down. So you have to you have to do this the, the correct way. If you don't do it, it's not going to work. It's it's no bueno. Yeah, six saying his closest main event run was the Bullet Club American Nightmare run, in my opinion. Let me know when the Lakers stop signing more players, A said. WWE's roster is trash. Five year. I think Wardlow, Cargill, MJF will be in WWE. Adam Cole might go back. You never know. Right. Calling it now, no matter what Cody does over the next run, it'll never be good enough for the diehards. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Ricochet defended the IC belt on WrestleMania SmackDown. Hawk, not good enough. I'm sorry, sir. Not good enough when you have Ricochet and Finn Balor and they're not on the show. Right. But we've got other people that I'm like, we had Madcap Moss on this show, but not Ricochet and Finn Balor. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean ROH was when he was the um, when he was main eventing. I didn't uh, want a main event in AEW. The reason no world title stipulation again because he knew the fans would think of it because of he was an EVP. Uh, yeah, I I heard Vince loves Jay Cargill and MJF. Funny thing, it, MJF was in WWE before and Vince didn't see anything in him. Uh, yeah, he tried out for Tough Enough. I remember he sent in a video, but now things change, bro. Money talks. Money, Money does talks. talk. Uh, Let's see here. WWE roster is thin. There aren't enough main event players. Roman, yeah, Roman's running through everybody at this point. Uh, legit Edge is a part timer. AJ hasn't been a main event player in years, and they need big main event players. The real question with all that is, will people uh, hop back over to watch? Cody is going to going over. Got me to watch this week, but I don't care much until the next big event. Uh, Balor Priest Mania would have been nice. Finn Balor is the Jeff Hardy now spot, according to the reports. Fun fact, Conrad hates Finn Balor. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm a big Finn Balor fan. Uh-huh. So moving forward, moving forward here. Um, we gave that match an A- minus as well. We got the Hall of Fame uh, folks showing up. Hall of Fame, always uh, something different, something special. Undertaker was the headliner for it. Uh, shout out to Shad Gaspar getting the Warrior Award. We also had the Steiner Brothers. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, it was good to see them. Pop pump. Queen Charmel was also put into the Hall of Fame. And Vader. It's time. Frankie's dad went into the Hall of Fame for Boy Meets World. Man, good stuff. Oh shoot! Oh, uh, wait a minute. That that was his dad. Yeah, oh, Boy Meets World. He showed up a couple times on there. Mm, I Frankie. Missed those messages. Yeah, he was like, Frankie, what are you doing? <laughs> Can't be beating kids up at school. Uh, good stuff, good yeah. stuff. So, after that, we get an announcement that 77,899,000 were in attendance. I kind of got the front and face because I don't know if that's fully true yeah. from the ticket sales I was hearing, but maybe that's how many people were in the arena. If so, good for WWE, rock it out, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't think it's that simple either. I don't, I don't think they had it the way that they're portraying it. But um, hold on now. We will not sully the good name of Maven when talking about Tough Enough. MJF was on the one I thought it might have been the most recent one that they had from a couple of years ago. The last Tough Enough, I believe, he auditioned for. His audition tape is up where you guys can uh, YouTube search it after this. Um, I think Cody and Tony Khan had bad blood uh, with the controls of AEW. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me see here. I think MJF was the year Velveteen Dream was on the show. Uh, Chucky saying cap about something. Uh, but, oh, about the number, I think. But it wasn't the uh, mm-hmm. 101,000 at Mania 32. This is true. And that was also cap, I heard as well. Uh, Carmelo Hayes uh, elevated the North American Championship more than the IC. Yes, that's sad, too. 
let's get into uh, one of Derek's good matches here, which is the Ronda Rousey Charlotte Flair match. This build sucked. I said it on the preview and prediction show, and yes. I still stand by it. This this sucked. Um, we we got wrestling in this one, but the fans felt like dragged out. Yeah. Um, we got we got to a point where everybody was just kind of. They, they they were tuckered out. Um, they 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 did they didn't have the energy for this match. I, I feel like this the energy for this match could have been better, which could have made the match itself better. But everybody was just like, all right, you know, it, it's been a long night so far. Like, I know I know this is the die down match, but I feel like if you were going to use this as the die down match, should have been. Maybe. I mean, technically, this was your main event in people's minds, though, because this is the match you put on last. This is your Royal Rumble winner. Like I said, the build was so crappy, though, that this couldn't really be seen as your main event. Um, no. I, yeah. I, like I said, you're going up against Bianca and Becky, who we said had a great match. And our two match of the nights were tied. And then the Cody and Seth match, we both gave A minuses to. Right. And then the Hall of Fame with Undertaker coming out got people hyped up again because Undertaker fans love Taker and they're in his home state. Right. And then we got this match and they're like, yeah, I need to sit down for a minute here. And it, it was still good. It was still good, but they knew they had to quiet yes. down for this one for what we get in the main event. Yes. Um, we get some wrestling. We, we saw some good spears here from Charlotte in the match. Uh, shout out to Braun Breaker. He had a great spear on Dolph Ziggler today, too. Uh, Rousey gets caught in a Boston Crab while on the ropes with Charlotte. Uh, we had Rousey hit the Piper's Pit. Charlotte was able to get out of the arm bar. She delivers a big boot. Both women were trading ankle locks back and forth. Both ladies spilled to the outside. We get another Piper's Pit when they get back into the ring. Um, ref catches it just in time. Charlotte hits natural selection. Ronda kicks out, and the referee gets speared down. He's down for a second. Arm bars locked in. Visual tap out happens. Nobody's there to see it. Right. And uh, as soon as she does that, Ronda eats a big boot, bro, from Charlotte. Knocked her out of her boots. Down she goes. One, two, three. Charlotte wins. So no submission like she had promised. We gave this a C plus. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, hold on here. Buy or sell on wrestler TV cameos. Vader on Boy Meets World or King Kong Bundy on Married with Children. I look finally on uh, Vader on Boy Meets World more yes. so. Uh, well, have you I, ever, have you ever seen Bundy on uh, Married with Children? Yes. I think he was on there once or twice. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Boy Meets World was better because you had uh, the lovely Topanga. That's just wrong. She's beautiful. Yeah. She's dead. She's dead. I know, beautiful. but Al, Al Bundy's a hero to many, many that of that true. time. Oh. Funny show. You cannot have Married with Children today play, though. Shout out to No Man. <laughs> uh, Ronda versus Charlotte gets a D. That is not for uh, the exposed top of Charlotte either. And R Dub, you were you were doing so well. And then we got we got to hit you with the Pornhub music. What are you doing, right. bro? <laughs> right. I did see that though afterwards. Um, that, that's why you were getting a lot of the, the camera cutouts during this. Um, sorry, my phone wanted to listen to me. I don't know why, but my uh, Bixby's been going absolutely crazy lately. Uh, this was the piss break match. Uh, this match gets a D plus from me. Right person won, though. Uh, this is what the problem is with WWE. They released all the good people and don't have contenders, and they don't want to push new stars. Facts. Uh, Rousey isn't a star anymore to some people. What do you think of Rousey, Derek? Uh, I, I love Rousey as a UFC fighter. I don't know how I feel about her as a WWE wrestler. Um, I think she's still in the rookie stages by some of the things that she does. I think Ronda's good, and she does things just differently. Like, the Piper's Pit always looks weird. We talked about even that, that flatliner she did, like, off the rope. Yeah. That was weird, too, but... Hey man, she she did what she had to for it. Um, and the titles are not important. Malik Murray is going off about the IC and US titles. I agree though. Yeah, uh, the build was garbage. That match uh was good. Uh, we are getting a rematch at Backlash, there's no doubt. I think Backlash is gonna be where Ronda gets the belt. I thought Ronda was winning here for sure, but I guess they wanted to wait. 
surprise Flair went over. I was certain Rousey would win uh, just so Flair could win the belt back at the next pay-per-view. Maybe she's going to slow down on her chasing her dad's record. Uh, the big boot ruined the uh, match for me. Hopefully Ronda is done after this. Ronda's coming back. Rumor has it she's going to face Becky next year in a one-on-one -on -one match. And I think that'll be much better than this if they build it right. Yeah, Rousey should be the heel. Rousey feels like a heel in my opinion. Yeah. Put her with Heyman or somebody. Give her a manager and let them do all the talking and just let her become the female Brock Lesnar. Just like, I'm going right. to suplex you. I'm going to dump you. Well, that's that's how that's how it should have been when she first debuted in WWE. She should have been the female Brock Lesnar where she was not losing at all and just dominating everybody. But you kind of blew that. So. Shout out to He said Al Bundy was named after King Kong Bundy, not the murderer, though. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I thought they said that was going to make uh, each other tap out. That was the build behind the match. But like I said, the build was stupid. It was. Uh, WWE can't build stars no more, like how. Uh, Terrell said, don't forget the Bushwhackers on Family Matters. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Remember that uh, yeah, one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it should have been the Sheep Herders. That's who it should have been. <laughs> uh, Chucky said he booked that match. Come on, Chuck. Come on, Chuck. So we gave this a C+. Plus. Let's move into that young main event, Derek, for uh, this. And the main event for tonight's. WrestleMania match. What? It was supposed to be the KO show with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yes. That's the bottom line. Uh, Stone Cold said so. And they went into doing this, and I, I don't know, man. This was just absolutely crazy. So Kevin Owens just runs down Texas because why? He's Kevin Owens. And He's going through, and he's just running him down, running him down, running him down. And Austin gets in the ring. He shows up, pulls out the ATV. He comes down, going in circles. Austin gets in the ring. He's like, what you doing? It's starting to piss me off. You're fixing to get your ass whipped. You know how Stone Cold gets into it. Yep. Flapping your little mealy mouth. And <laughs> and he's just doing all of his shit talking. Stone Cold's one of the best. I don't care what anybody says. Drop you on that stack of dimes you call, call a neck. neck. <laughs> and he just goes to work man so during all of this they're talking they're, they're going back and forth they're talking their mess and he says you know what steve i'm not gonna lie to you i didn't want to have a talk show with you i wanted to fight you yes and he challenged him to a no holds barred match in dallas texas stone cold yep. said i began my career here i'm gonna end my career here yep. and he's going to fight kevin owens in a no holds barred match that'll be that'll be that'll be what we needed in a very very long time dude this brought back so many childhood memories <laughs> what? <laughs> what? i forgot about that stone cold steve oh, austin man. started stomping a mud hole in kevin owens ass and walked it dry he uh he was going to work pat back if he should have been on the call rob said that we were watching this one with him and i totally agree pat pat, pat should have been on that bro that that would have that would have amplified that 100 times better yeah so let me get into some of this dude so many people were just on here calling me all my friends were calling me like dude do you see stone cold is wrestling right now and they were going in dude um <laughs> We got some funny comments in the chat going back and forth. Stone Cold versus KO was fire, Terrell said. I didn't expect to see Stone Cold getting suplexed on concrete, bro. They were tripping. Yeah, yeah, they were on that one. I, I, I feared for so much with him getting uh, uh, getting slammed on the cement. I was like, Ugh. Kevin Owens bumped like a madman for Stone Cold oh, yeah, in the absolutely. beginning, bro. He took a clothesline. He just, he's doing inside-out flips. Yes. He, is, uh, he went through a table for Stone Cold. Stone Cold got suplexed on the concrete. I was like, what the hell are we doing, bro? This dude is like, he's older, man. He's fragile. You, right. gotta... you can't, can't be doing all that with Stone Cold like that. Dude, I put what the F is going on in my notes. Like, what are they doing? Uh, Stone Cold eventually puts him onto an ATV. Always can't get it started. <laughs> Austin gets behind him. He's riding. They go all the way up the ramp. They're brawling. Suplexes. Yes. Onto the top of the stage, all over on both sides of the stage, dude. He brings him back into the ring, getting more beers. And someone's like, 
Stone Cold could be inebriated. Shut up, Corey. We're having a good time right now. Don't ruin this. Don't ruin this. And uh, eventually, oh. Kevin Owens hits a stunner on Austin, but only gets a two count. Yep. Austin is down, but Owens says, you know what? I'm going to get a chair. He goes to grab the steel chair, folds it up, gets into the ring. He goes to hit Austin with the chair. Austin ducks. <sighs> Chair bounces off the top. Haven't seen a good one like this. That's Kyle O'Reilly in NXT. Oh. Chair off the head of Owens. Hits himself in the head. Turns around into a stunner. Drops his ass. One, two, three. You send the fans home happy. Absolutely. That's how you do it, bro. That's Absolutely. how you do it. Yeah. Uh, this gets an A plus just on sheer nostalgia. value alone. Yes. Nostalgia. Better word. Thank you. Nostalgia. On um, pure nostalgia, bro. Yeah. Loved it. Kevin Owens gets escorted out by Texas police because the I guess the idea behind all this was you don't mess with Texas. <laughs> and uh, I, I I thought this was great. Austin celebrates with the beer and his brother. It was good. Yeah. Um. It it, it was nice to see him back. Uh. I was very skeptical about this. I didn't think it was going to be a match. But it was. I was proven wrong. Um, I enjoyed it, though. So I'll take my L on that one. Right. Uh, this segment was absolutely A+. plus. The match for what it needed to be was an A. Austin took more bumps than I thought he would. Um, Rob said, serious question. What would WWE have done if Austin asked the crowd if they wanted a match? They all chanted no. <laughs> I, I think I think they I think he still would have gone through with it. I know what he would have said. What? <laughs> what? What? Um, oh boy. Let me see here. Stone Cold saw Sting wrestling and was like, "What can I do?" He said, "What? I can do that." Yeah, till you hit that New Jack music with Sting. Sting's been tripping. Stone Cold bump on the floor. Sting does that every week through a table on Dynamite. Stone Cold Steve Austin saw the table was like, don't work for me, brother. Uh, Rob, that doesn't happen in any alternate universe, bro. <laughs> Austin gave all that he had that was left in him. A plus, man. I never thought I'd see another Stone Cold match, man. Got teary-eyed. This is probably the biggest moment of 2022 so far. I did love it. Um Hold on, BJ had a good comment before. Young Bucks new Twitter bio says, "WTF? I thought we were doing all in too." <laughs> yeah, they they've been trolling, man. Uh, this should have been Stone Cold versus Goldberg though. Austin was planning an in ring comeback. I wish he would have came back against Punk. Um, what was that? That's over ten years ago now. He, I yeah, wish you'd have yeah. did that match with Punk. That was one to do it. Austin was hitting the ropes and he looked good on Tough Enough, man. I wish it would have happened. Uh, Sting was never injured like Stone Cold. What the F? Laugh out loud. But yeah, listen, man, Sting took his bumps and bruises too, though. Sting, Sting's wrestled a lot over the years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Also, he didn't retire like 20 years ago. <laughs> Facts. Uh, Jim Ross should have been calling this match. <laughs> uh, why isn't Jim Johnston in the Hall of Fame? All those iconic themes that I guess they don't want to put people who aren't wrestlers in still. Hopefully one day. Uh, only thing missing was the Luthez press. Stunner! Jim Ross should have been calling this. My favorite lines. Sting also had the, the fusion as well. That is true. Yep. That is true. We're not here to compare injuries, though. This was a good time for uh, pro wrestling fans. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that's what I love. Yeah. Can't can't wait for uh, night two. This this should be the one that uh, should, should top the first one. Right? And, guys, if you're still in here, do me a favor. Hit that like button for me. Show me some love. And let's get into WrestleMania. And this is, is what we're getting on night two tomorrow. So here's what you have to look forward to when we do our review tomorrow. We're going to have Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn in an Anything Goes match. Should be interesting. Yeah. We also have Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory in a uh, uh, kind of a celebrity-esque match. It's a commentator versus a wrestler. I think this one's going to surprise a lot of people, though. We're also going to get Edge versus the phenomenal AJ Styles. Um, we're going to get RK Bro versus uh, Alpha Academy. I couldn't remember the names. Otis and Chad Gable. Sheesh. And the Street Profits. We have the women's tag titles uh, in a four-way tag team championship match. We also have Bobby Lashley versus Omas. Shout out to Omas singing uh, my, my jam from uh, high school. H to the O V. <laughs> and uh in the main event, I'm looking forward to this one. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. 
unifying the <laughs> championships. Uh, it should be a good time had by all. And I love it. I'm hoping night two is really good. Night two looked a little bit more lackluster to me than night one. Yeah. Night one was really good. I don't know what we're going to do for this. And let's talk, Derek. What is the uh, overall grade for this show? We had three A matches on here, bro. Mm. I, I feel like we got to say this is an A minus for night one overall. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, There wasn't too many. There wasn't. A lot of there's not there's not too much to complain about in yeah, my opinion. Like there there weren't too many issues to 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 point out. Um, it seemed like for the most part they were on point with with everything that they were doing. Um, so I, I I'm I'm happy with it. Night two is is where it's where it's really at, and this as a whole when you've combined it together should have a good grade. So right now. Night one is banking on night two to play very well so that we can hit. We're, we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get yeah. to, we're going to get our big matches and moments. We had Logan Paul, Ronda Rousey, Cody Rhodes, and Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle on the same show. 2022 is wild. Drink some beers and raise hell. New day match confirmed cut by Kofi Kingston on uh, Twitter. And our dub saying B plus for the show. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go A minus, man. I thought it was really, really good for the nostalgia factor. I think that's giving it the boost, man. Yeah, and it's been a while since we've given a grade like that. Yeah, for WWE, it's been about a minute. Yeah. Uh New Day match confirmed cut by Kofi. That's sad, man. Sad for New Day. Hopefully they get to uh do it. A minus Stone Cold save tonight's life. He did. Oh yeah. Uh, the highs outweigh the lows, but there were way more lows than highs. It normally would be a C plus, but Mania gets the bump to a B minus. EPW always gets to A plus. You guys are the best. A minus, A minus. People are throwing out the grades. Uh, favorite Mania moment. Uh, that's tough, man. I don't know. I, I'd have to think about those. Little Nate <laughs> running down at twenty four. <laughs> do 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 do. Um, it should be good. Listen, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tune back in for night two. We're going to be covering that. And it sounds like we're going to be covering Monday Night Raw. Hey, Zeus, I blame you for a lot of this. I know you're in the arena. You're probably on your way back to your hotel or getting home, whatever you're doing out there. Hey, right. Zeus. Damn you, hey, Zeus. We blame you, hey, Zeus. We're going to do that Raw after Mania for you. Pray for us. Yes. But we'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the podcast. Thank you all for supporting everything pro wrestling. We appreciate the love. Tell a friend to check us out. Everything pro wrestling for myself. Derek, we are out. One. One. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes. By the fans, uh, for the fans, uh. Not many in this can understand, uh. This the podcast to show you who I am, uh. Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans, uh. Please listen every day to the showcase. The opinions and knowledge that anyone can take. Showing you how it is done. Proving I am number one. What a legend becomes. This is now my time to show you that I am here. Uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear. Uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many whose hand can understand. Uh, everything pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast here for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinion and the lesson, yes. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes.